forever. You know, you're never going to get rid of it and, and you're never going to keep it from getting in everything, but try to mitigate that. I mean, we don't know, uh, uh, you know, I, I work with this stuff all the time and, you know, I just try and do my best not to bring it home and not spread it and, uh, you know, use some common sense, but I got this, uh, Lincoln has a Snyder outlet where they make these and this is a blim, you know, so it didn't cost hardly anything mounts right on the planter. I know some of you fancy new planters don't really have a spot like that, but put it on the tongue, put it someplace, you know, just, uh, and then just carry a little bit of hand cleaner and boy, you know, makes makes life much better you know more 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 tolerable when you're eating your sandwich up there then you know you're not you know eating a whole bunch of permethrin insecticide or even dirt just getting dirt you know you get your hands dirty i don't like dirty hands so there you go all right we're finally able to get back in the field here i hope uh just you know switched the machine over to soybeans so now i got to go through the ground that I'm going into has been worked. This controls our uh, down pressure. Now, since it's been worked, it is so mellow. I'm pushing these all the way forward. Kind of go tap them down a little. Make sure I do not need any more down pressure than I you know, need here because this place is gonna be mellow as can be. Uh, I'll just do these four to start with. All right, now, depth-wise, I plant my corn around two and a half inches deep. I stick it in there good. Uh, soybeans, you adjust that right here. And uh, I think that I usually go up, well, this will be a good starting point right here. Six, uh, six showing from the top. We'll see soybeans, especially on this ground, as long as it's getting in the ground and getting covered, I don't care if it's only, you know, we usually measure by our fingers, you know, if it's only in an inch, that's fine. This stuff's gonna jump out of the ground. You want you want the soybeans to get out of the ground. Oh, and I'm gonna adjust the down pressure. This is our closing wheels. Again, since this is so mellow, I'm gonna adjust these down to their lowest setting well, no, I'll leave them where they are. Second one. We'll see. I'll try it. And uh, so that's how we switch it over. It's a good starting point. You know, I'll, I'll go about 100 feet. Then I'll get out and I'll dig behind the trench and see what, uh, see what the depth is and make sure everything's working and turning. And uh, so, yep time to hopefully get some beans in the ground they're talking about more rain coming this weekend pretty darn good shot uh, and I got to work all week or I don't want to take time off just to plant beans so we'll just uh, give her heck with what I can there's 40 acres here if, uh, if uh, it's about, oh, what is it, 2.30, almost 3 o'clock. If I push it hard, if everything goes good, hopefully get this farm done. And uh, maybe even get my machine moved back to Weeping Water tonight. We'll see. I'm not going to count on that. So if you can see, my machine's kind of tilting a little. What happens is... And, and there's another YouTuber's talking about this, why his raise is so high. I've got a, uh, some oil leaks here on these hydraulic cylinders. So what happens, it bleeds a little out. Well, you got your master cylinder down here, so that controls both sides. So what I gotta do is there's a spacer, it's right here. And uh, you take that out and then you lower it and raise it. And then it'll, it'll, uh, correct it um, then you put the spacer back in if you don't have the spacer in then these all the tires are just locked solid all the way down so if you go over bump they don't walk whereas where so we you want that otherwise all the weight will end up on that tire and in and so then that one would be off the ground and so would that one and all the weight then is on these two tires and that's how you pop rims and 
break things, twist things. So uh, I'll do a video on that, how I fix that at some point. Well, it's leaning pretty darn good. So we're gonna go ahead and fix this. Try and do it one-handed here. There is this, uh, it's just a uh, hose clamp. You have to take off of here to get this off. Okay, so this is what it is. This, you take this hose clamp off, these two halves come off, and now you can see we got this space here. So we'll go up. We hit our lever, and it raises it up. There we go. And it levels it all out. Usually I do it twice. Try and get rid of any air in the lines. All right, then we lower it back down. Now we go put the spacer back in and everything will be fine. All right, well, my dad has a seat tender. I don't own one yet. I probably should have bought one this year, but uh, I've got this little wagon that's always kind of worked okay for me. The problem is it's for like a four row or maybe a six row. It won't, the, the auger is long enough to swing across all eight rows. <coughs> so, uh, these are, uh, so yeah, let me go load it and uh, you can watch me. Okay, things were going good. It's pretty dang wet out there, but uh, then all of a sudden I turned around and this outside row unit was kind of not planting straight. And as soon as I picked up, heck, it swung around on me. And uh, if you can see, heck, this bolt, the whole end just broke off on it. Uh, it's supposed to go there and be tight. And you can see it just snapped on me. So, uh, MacGyver ingenuity here just I can always got to be creative so found a strap and uh, you know it, it's barely hooked on this bolt but I've only got 10 acres left hopefully it'll be enough to get it done it's kind of it's away from everything that turns all it's got to do is keep this back you know when I'm going through the field it'll have pressure pulling it back but uh, so yeah, and I just got strapped over here. Got strapped actually to the uh, wheel. So um, yeah, well, wish me luck. 